Hi everyone. Hi. Hi. Lovely to meet you. It's Thank the you. Wonderful... you too. Thank you. Wonderful, Fabio D'Andrea. And <laughs> it's fantastic that you're here with us. Um, it's very exciting news about your album, but before we're going to talk about that a lot, but tell us a bit about you to start with. Sure. Well, for those who don't know me, my name's Fabio and I am a pianist and composer and film director as well. And Ooh. I've been playing the piano pretty much all my life and released a few different albums before and recordings and have performed on lots of pop tracks that people would probably know and recognize, but, um, but I'm predominantly doing my own music at the moment and just trying to bring classical music to a whole different audience who would not normally listen to it. Fabulous. Oh, that sounds that sounds amazing. I mean, the thing is about you know having so many strings to your bows. I mean, what tell us about the the films that you've directed, Fabio? Yeah, well, I ever since I was a kid, I always wanted to make movies. To be honest, and um, actually, it was a music class at school. I remember my music teacher asking everybody um, what they wanted to do when they grow up, and I raised my hand. I was like the first, and I said, "I want to make movies." The teacher said, oh, no, sensible answers, please. So from that, <laughs> from that point on, I told everybody I was going to become a lawyer. Uh, but, um, but, um, but obviously, um, music was always my first passion. And I studied that at University at the Royal Academy of Music and um, King's College London and um, just always progressed with music. But um, there was always this desire to make movies. And um, one day, I uh, well, I, I'd made some music videos with other directors before, and quite frankly, I was always on set getting really frustrated, looking at what they're doing, thinking, oh, no, what are, what are you doing that for? I can do this in a much better way. So I just decided to, to start making my own, to be honest. And um, that was just really, for me, it was just, it was brilliant because it was just a combination of music and film together, which I both enjoy. So I felt like I was having my fullest creative freedom at that point and I've not really looked back since I've started just to make more and more uh, predominantly uh, music videos um, I'm also starting my first documentary as well <gasps> oh that what's that going to... what's the well, documentary that is following on from my latest music video um, that I released earlier in, earlier in the year in January um, it stars Peter Andre and it's called Another Way, and it's um, quite a gritty music video. So it's about the themes of teenage mental health, cyberbullying, and suicide, adolescent suicide. And for the video, um, it's quite a lengthy music video anyway. It's 15 minutes long, but um, my original intention was to have uh, sound bites at the end and have people just talk about real-life experiences. And I filmed a number of parents who've sadly lost their children and um, and Peter shared some of his own struggles and other people did as well. But um, the interviews ended up being sort of an hour and a half every time I, I interviewed somebody and there was so much to talk about. And I thought, I, I just can't produce this to bite size snippets to go on, you know, sort of almost social media. This, this needs to be developed into something bigger. So it's morphed into a documentary and um, I've been um I've been up and down the UK and actually even to Italy as well to film some parents who've just got some harrowing stories. But it's it's all stemmed out of the music video, really. So um, now what now what is weird? And this might be very sort of a synchronicity, synchronized, synchronized yeah. synchronicity. <laughs> is, is that I am the ambassador of the National Bullying Helpline. Oh wow! Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, and um, you know we've been actually over the last few months advising Coronation Street on their storyline. Have you been watching that? I haven't, no, but I think I will go into now after. The, yeah, but yeah, so, and yeah. so it was brilliant that they they came on to Christine, who you know founded the helpline, and they said we want to make this as realistic as possible, and we mm. want to find out what happens to the children and the parents and everything. And they've done this wonderful story that's been going on for months because that's how long these things go on. And yeah. it's absolutely incredible. Um, so they, they follow, and she's working with the actors as well, the young actors, everybody re re reading the scripts before they go out, changing little things that aren't right. Because obviously uh, it's actually made, 
I think the helpline has, has had three or four million calls since the storyline has been going out. Wow. It, that doesn't surprise me, Debbie. To be honest, I've been shocked myself since I've I've undertaken this journey. And, uh, you know, growing up, I, um, I guess I was the last generation that didn't have social media. We had the internet, but not social media. But I think many kids get bullied. But back then, if you were bullied, it, as awful as it was, that moment was left in history. You would relive it in your mind and you would dwell on it. But now kids are just exposed to so much more because bullying tends to happen with people filming it. People film everything and they post stuff online and they're reliving these situations again and again. And I just think we're basically in a bullying pandemic. <laughs> that's that's the way I can only describe it. And um, you just have to look at the way that adults comment online on social media. We would we seem to lose any inhibition. People feel that they can say anything online and, and nobody would act in the same way to your face. Nobody would say those things if they met you in person. Yeah, for some reason, we feel like we're at liberty just to be really rude and just say and rude. I wonder, yeah. I wonder why. I mean, you know, it's weird, isn't it? Don't, don't you think, girls? It, it's weird that, you know, I, I do a lot of work with um, Good Morning Britain, and sometimes some of the comments are so evil and vindictive and nasty. Yeah. And you've yeah. just got to go. But, but I mean, you know, people are safe, though. Aren't they? They feel safe in their own rooms, or they're sitting but out. What, but even if they're safe, Natalie Dean, why would they want to, to speak like that anyway? I don't. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know. But you know, I rem remember having. Um, I was doing a, a court case, and it, it went into a newspaper a couple of years ago, and it was about getting some royalties back. Um, and exactly the same thing happened. You know, they were the trolls were saying, "Oh, you know." greedy, horrible, money-grabbing, you know, so-and-so about me. And I thought, do you know what? I, di I didn't care. But if I was, you know, 16 or 12, that yeah. probably would have finished me off, you know? And I think it's so nasty. They, ha they have no idea, but it's their, you know, 15 minutes of fame, isn't it? Oh, you know, I can do that. I can say what I like. Nobody's going to reprimand me because they won't be able to get hold of me. But it's That's completely, tough. yeah. I mean, so I, I, I feel like people actually use this as an excuse to make themselves feel better because there's something culturally that we've built up over a long time. And it's it's not just inherent in the UK, sadly. I think it's sort of a Western disease, but we love yeah. to tear people down because it makes us feel better about ourselves. And I think Correct. that's part of the reason why people just, adults in particular, feel really free to write vile stuff and comments. And I, I mean, yeah. I notice it with this video. Here's... Here's Peter actually really helping to do something really great, appearing in this really gritty music video, bearing his soul, you know, talk, talk you know, he's, he's come from a background where he's experienced bullying as well. And and just the comments I saw written about him online, and I just thought, wow, people are bullying you or bullying him and not realising this is an anti-bullying campaign. And I just <laughs> found it astonishing yeah. that, yes. that, that people could do that. And part of why I wanted to do this, and I've been trying to petition parliament and i've met one or two mps about this is that i think we need to have some accountability online and um there was actually a, a law passed in ireland it's called coco's law and it was passed by a lady called jackie fox and sadly jackie lost her daughter who was 17 she took her own life and she did so because she was just being horrendously bullied online but now in ireland um if somebody is bullying somebody to the extent online that they actually do take their own life they can be held accountable and for that and I think the same needs to happen over here because it's only until we start making people feel that actually you can be prosecuted for your actions for what you're saying to others mm. then then people start to take it more seriously sadly because I just don't think as a society we've got a grip on this we're we're losing it the, your your album is it is it true it's going to be one one um track released a month over 12 months is yes so I've already released eight videos, so another way was one of them. And uh, the videos, I like to mix them up. So they're either a combination of um, just really artistic, fun, creative things that celebrate the arts. And yeah. that's, again, part of what I want to do, just make the arts more accessible to people. And then the other side to that is that I like to film videos about social topics, which I think we need to talk about. So this one with cyberbullying and suicide was one. I um, asked Mel B to be in one of my music videos for the for the album, and that was called um, "Love Should Not Hurt," and that was about domestic abuse 
So we did quite a powerful one about that. And um, some of the videos have touched on issues like grief, um, hidden illnesses. So the actress Rose Leslie came to appear in one of my videos and we we made that about multiple sclerosis, which is quite a hidden, hidden disease, but affects a lot of younger people. So the sort of hidden issues in society really uh, interest me. But then on the flip side, some of the other ones are just very nice artistic ones that just celebrate dance and um, culture. So the last uh, or the latest video, I should say, that I'm releasing with um, Renee Stewart, who's Rod Stewart's daughter. Um, it's just a real celebration about dance and art. And she's an incredible dancer. She studied at the London Contemporary Dance School, studied under one of my friends who's an amazing choreographer. So I, I really wanted to ask Renee to be be in one of my videos just because she which, looks amazing which, on camera. Which child, which which mother is she from? Uh, Rachel Hunter. All right. Yeah, so uh, she models as well. So I think she's inherited that from her mum, <laughs> that skill definitely. Yeah. What's first, Fabio? Do, when, you, when you are, um, what comes first? The writing of the music comes from an issue and then the images for what you want to do in your storyboarding of your films comes next or, or which way around? Uh, yeah, good question. So all the music came first. So literally I just wrote the whole album. I wrote it quite a while ago. And, um, and mostly I write, especially on the piano, out of improvisation. So I'll just be there. And um, every piece is based in a different key. And I think actually every key on the piano has its own different feel. So I've tried to encapsulate that in the pieces. And then afterwards, really, I've sat down and thought, what would be a really good topic to come out of this piece of music? Because it's all happened so unconsciously and spontaneously. I don't even know. I had no idea where the music was going to go, what was going to be the results of my improvisation basically so um the same things happened with the videos uh, out of the back of those i sort of thought well, what, what would be really good i've looked at issues that i've um i thought i've needed to talk about but but yeah the music comes first and then the video afterwards and the videos are cut to the music so yeah. and then the next stage you, so so a choreographer will listen to the music get the images and then you talk together about how, how does that work the choreography yeah so um i i'm just uh, uh a really bad dancer but somebody who loves to dance <laughs> so I, um, when when i was younger i i used to go to pineapple studios just for fun and the reason i started is actually i was i was walking past one day just peering in the window and one of my friends from school, Jerry Reeve, um, he was actually teaching a class and he's become quite a top choreographer and he's, he's done some of the videos. But Jerry dragged me into class, which was great. And I just um, was at the back, just kind of doing it for fun. And there's all really serious people in there wanting to become <laughs> pro dancers. But I made friends with a lot of people and um, they all happen to be some of the biggest choreographers now. So it's been really just very organic and very fun. And I've just had a, an amazing time because this has given me the opportunity to work with people that I just really admire and I've wanted to work with. Um, so for example, Ashley Wallen, my friend who um, choreographed the video of Mel B, he, he choreographed The Greatest Showman, did Hugh Jackman's tours. Jerry does The Voice and has done some X Factor and did the Queen's Jubilee or the late Queen's Jubilee uh, celebrations. And so they've all become really well known in their own right. So it's really, it's just been a really good excuse to get friends together just to create something. So I'd normally create the storyline and I would figure out which part I could get a dance scene into. And then I would just hand it over to them and say, just go for it and do whatever you want. And let's just make something fun. Wow. It sounds amazing. We're going to play some of it now. What would you like to do or what have you got planned? Yes, well, I've got, I've got a lot on the cards, I guess. <laughs> I, um, I've still got a few more videos to make for, for this album, so I'm sort of uh, putting putting those together at the moment. Um, it takes quite a while to do all the pre-production and, and get everything ready for filming. And uh, so that's taken up a lot of my time, but I've um, also been writing some symphonies, which I hope to record. Of course, a yeah, quick symphony. Yeah. I'm just gonna write a quick symphony and I'll be back, hold on. Yeah, I, I, I wrote one in August, which was, I kind of went through a few years of probably having writer's block and then suddenly, just went for in two months i wrote this mammoth two-hour piece which i actually want to have staged as a live show as well i'm sort of finishing off another and then obviously i've got this documentary i'm working on so i'm juggling a few things 
together but um i tend to thrive when i'm being creative so so for me that's that's good i think if i didn't have any projects to do i'd be a bit lost to be honest but, yes yeah. yes that's amazing I think, I think i think we're i think we're all the same but um you know we all need millions of strings to our bow i mean and i think you know you know because d is a singer and as well and Natalie yeah. also you you're very good at you play the piano and I play the piano in the show that I'm doing at the moment but I don't really play it <laughs> I, I don't know no I'm not I'm not good at, it at all I, I play by ear but I just think music is such a massive relief um and a release as well um <laughs> Debbie and I are doing a play at the moment and every night that we drive back because it's about 50 minutes to drive home unless we're staying in a nice hotel there um i've just become addicted to listening to classic fm now my husband is steeped in classical music and knows the names of everything and has mountains of old cds and plays you know he just loves and he just knows what everything is i don't i'll listen to this and go i know this i know this what's it called and then they sometimes go to an advert break and i, go, oh, I get so frustrated because i want to know what it was but i've become addicted to listening to it because it really winds me down at it the does, end of doesn't the it oh, yeah so do you know what I like also, Fabio, is that you're bringing it to an audience that normally wouldn't listen to classical music. I mean, I was having this conversation the other day um, with some friends and it was like, you know, some people, if they hear classical music, they go, oh, no, no, turn it off, you know. But if, if that music is put to a video or a film, they'll watch it and think that, the music is wonderful. That's, and it's, that's it's the just thing. taken out of you know, out of context. And it's really weird how that happens. And I think with what you're doing, it's very clever, actually, because that will also, you know, um, I think activate people's imagination and, and get them into different sorts of music, classical. It's such a pity, Fabio, that um, Cad is not here, Hannah Mason, because all mm -hmm. her kids play classical music. And um they, they, she actually was on Britain's Got Talent, so there you yeah. are. And, and she never, they never stopped working. Um, and her her daughter's been on, and I mean, amazing family, but you know, very uh, ordinary, and you know, not elitist. And 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 as you say, I think that sort of um, the reputation of classical is 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 not the way people see it. I think it's, and what you're doing is fantastic because you're transforming that. Oh, what was you. that documentary that they did? It was called The House of Music, and it's all of them, all seven children, quite grown-up children, playing all of them different instruments. It was absolutely breathtaking. Yeah. Well, I find, actually, there's a lot of families like that out there as well. It's it's quite It's quite interesting how many people do really celebrate music as families you know that they yeah i think that's such together. a i think that's such a lovely idea my my um grandsons the 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 youngest one has already doing things at the piano and he but but unlike the others he's more you can just tell he's he's more into it more into the piano and also now it, it, with the guitar as well i can just see he's got guitars on the walls and he's just already, and he's not two yet, but already it's the interest in in the music, whereas the others sort of like, you know, went bad out and that was it. But you can tell that he's, he likes it. He also sings back to you if you sing to him. So oh. he's, he's got, he he's all, he's, whatever it is, he, he understands music, you know what I mean? The other thing about music as well is that, especially with kids, it really actually um, it makes them more academic. It actually helps them improve their their grades it because does. if you're playing an instrument from a young age, you're learning a number of skills all at once. You're learning actually to read music as well, so you read. You are learning a language. Um, you, you're developing your oral skills. You're developing your sight. Everything and it's no surprise that kids who do study music from a young age, they're always the ones that do really well at school and they find it easier. Yeah. And I think it's such a shame that progressively we're, we're having music cuts in education, music cuts yeah, in schools, yeah. the arts cuts. Yes. You know, the arts are so important in our society. Um, you know, that's how we get messages across. I mean, the politicians would have a be much better time getting artists to actually convey their messages than then standing on podiums. Yeah, I don't about. understand. It's like, you know, in this country, what we're doing is we're trying to make 
um, academia with with no with nothing with it. You know, so the music is is the yeah. is the fun acting and art. They're all you know and to to sort of say well it's not a proper career. Can't be an mm. actress. Can't be a musician. You know, think of something which is exactly what they did at lockdown. Do you remember they? I don't know which you. MP it was. Yeah, it's it's very it's very Sunak, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. 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 get a proper job. Ridiculous. Yeah. If you think about playing the piano as well, you're you're doing something with your left hand, something else with your right hand. Your foot is probably doing something else with a pedal. You might be humming along and singing as well. So you're doing four things at once. And you're yeah. thinking ahead to the next and thing as yeah. well. Yeah. You know, it, it, years yeah. ago, um, I was trained at um, Interaction. It was on a ship, and it, I was out of work, and I thought, I've got to get a job. And I thought, what do I do? So I answered an ad in stage, <laughs> and it was and it was Ed Berman and. My partner at the time, he said, oh, you're not going to get this because it said teachers who can sing. And I wasn't a teacher and I had no training as a teacher, but it was to work with special needs children. And it was key stage one and two of the education curriculum. Anyway, I, I went for the job, got it, and I went into schools for about two years and it, with special needs, you know, the, the kids that were excluded from the sort of mainstream. And it was fantastic. And I had such feedback from these kids because they were, you know, some had learning difficulties or they were like sort of um, autistic or whatever. But I really, I could see how music was transforming their lives. And it was just amazing. Yeah, there's there's something to follow even on from that, Dee, that actually there's, and I'm, I'm you know, I'm not into science at all, <laughs> and, uh, but there's something about sound waves. And yes. I know a lot of um, scientists are developing on looking at how sound waves actually heal our bodies. Mm -hmm. And actually, when you're playing a live instrument, there is something physically that happens because that sound wave resonates in with your body. And you actually physically feel it. So it's not just about hearing it, it's physically feeling it as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, if sound waves can actually bring healing to our bodies, you know, I definitely think there is a power within music because of the yeah, sound Yeah, because waves. There, are, there are blind musicians. Yeah. So... I mean, I mean that's that is what is so incredible, isn't it? And yeah. and deaf, you know, drummers, which Evelyn so, Glennie, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's incredible, isn't it? It's because frequencies. I think there is a scientific aspect to it because frequencies, as you say, and vibrations are, you know, really important. We don't realise there's so many things we don't understand. That's and it. I, and and especially from live instruments. That's that's why I think with this album, I just concentrated on the piano. I went back to my first instrument because I think yeah, there's something very yeah. different from hearing just a pure piano sound. It's got all the notes there <laughs> in, the, in the musical scale. You, you can physically feel it. And um, and sometimes you don't get that from, you know, lots of heavily electronic stuff, because, again, those those frequencies, it's more about turning up the volume on your speakers. But there's something about being in front of a real piano and just feeling that sound hit you, that that does something to you. And Natalie, I think you touched on it when you said earlier that it relaxes you. It can, there is something about that sound which... So when you listen yeah. to a hypnosis tape, people very often use sort of sound wave kind of music and it's all about feeling, isn't it? And, mm -hmm. and music has the power to just switch feelings. Dee and I are always talking about this, how you can be feeling very blue and, and, and suddenly play a piece of music. Right, okay, you're back. You know, you're mm -hmm. back in the room. Because Something has just made you feel the trigger. It's brilliant. Mm -hmm. We will do. Um, obviously, we we you know your album is fantastic, and we'll play some more of that. Oh, thank you. But um, you know, if you need any help with the National Bullying Helpline, if you'd like to get in touch with Chris or I'd love with me, to. I'd love to help. Oh, thank you so much, and thank you for having me. It's been wonderful. Oh, it's been a oh, thank you. It has. Thank you, Fabio. Take care. Cool. Thanks, Fabio. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.